This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. The Business of Songwriting. Donna Britton, Ross Ornstein, and C.J. Watson on this edition of Conversations. Getting behind the scenes of the songwriting business, from publishing to getting your song placed in a movie or TV show. How is it done? Well, we'll talk about that, as well as getting the creative juices flowing and finding some non-traditional ways to get your songs heard. We're joined by Donna Britton, president and co-owner of Shadow Mountain Publishing, LLC, a company that helps writers get their material placed on television and in movies. She's also a songwriter and a member of a unique group called Team Green Songwriters. Ross Orenstein is an award-winning writer of children's songs. He is the creator of several characters that help teach children important lessons about such things as safety, health, and the environment. His characters include Hardy, the safety ape, and Echo the Butterfly. I should say Eco the Butterfly. <laughs> Ross is also on the board of directors of the Pensacola Beach Songwriters Festival. C.J. Watson is a singer-songwriter. His songs have been part of the video game Rock Band, not to mention several national radio shows. He is a past winner of the Kerrville New Folk Songwriting Award, a distinction shared by the likes of Lyle Lovett, Steve Earle, and Towns Van Zant. It was once said about C.J. Watson, the best songwriter to hit Nashville in over a decade. Got a lot of talent on one stage. Ooh. Thanks for joining us. Stop it. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Team Green Songwriters. Let me start with you, Donna. What is it? Team Green Songwriters is actually a division of Shadow Mountain Publishing, which is my company. Mm -hmm. And Team Green was put together to help spread the message of green music. Mm -hmm. um, our particular division is full of all kinds of talent from all over the world. Um, and, and it's music for teens for parents but not so much it's kid friendly right. but it's not children's music right. um, and the exciting thing about what we're doing is, is we, we sort of want to uh, run under the um, the same vehicle like Jack Johnson has with you know with all the things that he's doing with Green Music Group. Oh and, the one percent for the planet thing Bonnie Raitt's involved in and actually your company is partnered there and doing that too. We recently, we recently actually joined 1% for the planet and we're hoping that that's going to really give us, that's going to be a great vehicle for Team Green songwriters to get it out there and share our music. So kind of the goal here is to use your songwriting talents to make a difference. Absolutely. To dovetail on one of your businesses, music right. is a message, kind of the same thing. Now, you've been involved in cause-oriented things for years and years. How did you get hooked up with these guys? Right. Well, I started out writing music for McGruff the Crime Dog about 20 years ago. Okay, yeah. And, uh, and then it created some other characters, a safety A party and uh, Eco the Butterfly. And Don and I actually met a year ago, uh, probably a year ago today, I think, yeah. <laughs> uh, at the Pensacola Beach Songwriters Festival. Yeah. Talk about networking and how you use non-traditional ways to get your music out there. Uh, Donna told me the story about uh, her division called Team Green Songwriters. I told her about Eco the Butterfly. And one year later, we have uh, put together a project, and it's a 12-song CD, uh -huh. uh, teaching kids about and their parents about uh, the environment and earth-friendly things through music, because we think music is the vehicle. You know, you can give kids a pamphlet and they throw it away. You give them a song and it gets stuck in their head. Like, yeah. how did you learn your ABCs? You learned right. it through the ABC what, songs. And I just opened this all three of you. Why, why is that? Why do we have that strong connection to music? Music affects a different part of the brain. Reading is something that, you know, upright people react to. You, you put a newspaper in front of your dog, nothing happens. Right. Music <laughs> gets back into the subconscious. You play the right song and your pets react, you know. Right. Little bitty kids who can't read react. Plants react to music. So it opens up your mind in a lot of different areas that just plain text won't do. Yeah. And, and, and you know what's, and, and, and I'll pose this once again to kind of all three of you to get you feeling. You, you know, you can be in a kind of a down mood. You're not, you know, you feel kind of sluggish or what, and your, your, your favorite song comes on and it, and it peps you up. And I've always been curious, what, what, what's happening, CJ? <laughs> Again, it, it gets back in the limbic brain. It makes it, your brain releases more adrenaline and hormones and endorphins. Yeah, yeah. The things that, you know, it's, it's like having a cup of coffee, but your body makes the, the get up and go instead of right. the caffeine. Right. How long have you been in the music business? 
I actually started in radio when I was about nine years old in 1970. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had an uncle who was a singer and songwriter who abandoned it. He got his degree and went into a, a technical corporate job and never played again. And I just felt a hole in my life. I'm like, Uncle Greg never sings for us anymore. Yeah. So I jumped in, and then after I learned three chords, I started meeting girls, and, you know, it was kind of just, <laughs> I couldn't leave it after that. <laughs> that's, that's right. How about you, Donna? I've been in the music business uh, since I was, wow, I'm trying to think. Um, it caught me completely off guard. I won a contest when I was in fifth grade uh, with a Broadway singer auditioned a bunch of children. And I was one of 15 people chosen to teach uh -huh. ha under the tutelage of, I think it was Charlotte Dixon from New York off of Broadway. And so that was kind of exciting. Um, and it all started from there. And then I was in plays. And I studied piano. And I studied voice. And um, I got in a rock band when I was 15. And my parents did not like that because that was loud music in the garage. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, you know, I was supposed to be studying for law instead, yeah, yeah. Um, which is what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to be a lawyer. So instead, what I did was is I got into a rock band and started singing Led Zeppelin and, you know, Aretha Franklin and James Brown, kind of Motown mixed with, you know, the great rock, you right, know, the, the, right. the rock greats. Yeah. And uh, then I was in a band for a long time in Washington, D.C. area. And then I went to L.A. when I was 19. And I got a record contract. Um, and we were babies. Mm -hmm. So and we mm -hmm. had independent. That, even indies were back. They were around back then, which was kind of exciting. Yeah. So I got a record deal at 19 years old. Neat. And from there, it's, there's an awful lot more. But that's you know, basically the crux of it. I did study at Berkeley for a little while, which I really loved. I spent some summers there. So. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ross? How well, did music come to you? Well, my music career probably started when I got kicked out of piano lessons for not reading the music but playing by ear. Oh, okay. So I uh, figured out that, uh, well, this is kind of neat. You can, like, don't have to read music. You can, like, write songs by writing the words and putting the chords above them. <laughs> so uh, I've just always had a love of music and uh, had a midlife career change and pursued my, my dream, which is, is music. and. Uh, the children's music especially came interesting to me because it was a niche that not that many songwriters at the time were doing. Right. And I uh, never had dreams of having a top 40 country hit, but I do have dreams of, you know, getting my characters out there and, right. and making a difference in the world. Well, how did the McGruff deal come about? Well, McGruff's, that was 20-something uh, years ago. <laughs> um, there was actually a, a McGruff conference in Pensacola, and there was, there was a book company here called Create a Book that... Uh -huh. I had a McGruff book, and we were invited to their conference, and met the met the people from the licensing, and actually became licensed okay. at that point, and and then that started the whole thing, going up to Washington and getting excited about it. That's neat. Now, some of the other characters that you have created, wh what's been your motivation behind those? Well, obviously, uh, childhood obesity is a big issue right now, so there's a character called Hardy, teaches kids through music about uh, eating right and exercise. And then, of course, Eco the Butterfly is, is kind of my baby right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where, um, you know, we just did this thing where we did, we've, uh, filmed a song called The Lean Green Dancing Machine. Okay. And this was um, 15 to 20 kids got together and choreographed this dance that we just uh, did at the Seafood Festival. Okay, okay. And we're going to be, that'll be available on YouTube coming okay. up okay. soon <laughs> on, on YouTube. Oh, hey, there, there was yeah. a plug for YouTube. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and that's kind of a focus on taking care of the environment. And exactly. And, and as you see on the screen, uh, after one year of, of meeting Donna, we put uh, this Think Ecologically, Team Green Songwriters and Eco the Butterfly, Think Ecologically, and there are 12 songs, uh, and these are kid-friendly songs, but they're adult songs also. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of kid songs that adults don't mind listening to. Right. It's kind music of Music for thing. the earth. Music yeah. for the earth. Earth friendly. And you see the Team Green songwriters on screen. Oh, cool. Uh, interesting. I think, you know, one of our notable songwriters, I mean, we have many notable songwriters, but there's about 15 songwriters in total for Team Green songwriters, and CJ is one of the senior writers on, on Team Green. But... Um, it was really unusual how I, I heard about Paolo Lara. Mm, and um, he has an incredible song called Better World. And actually, we entered in Talk About Saving the World uh, to this contest. for was Music it? for the Earth Music talent the Earth. competition. Big worldwide contest. Right. Yeah. And so Paolo Lara, I, I heard his song, and I said, oh, my gosh, this song is incredible. Yeah. And uh, so 
I called him up and I talked with him and I asked him if he wanted to be a part of Teen Green Songwriters and he said absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... And then he it, ended up winning the Music for the Earth competition, which... Uh -huh. You know, good for us. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it really just brings together a lot of different kinds of talent in Teen Green. And uh, and then with Ross's character and your songs, people kind of compare him to Randy Newman, which is, which is, which is fun, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. and, and kids, they want to feel engaged. They want to mm -hmm. feel entertained. And if they can learn about, hey, you know, you know, you want to take your, you know, you want to recycle everything that you can. Well, mommy, what does recycle mean? Right. Well, here's a song, reduce, reuse, and recycle, you know, and they're all on there telling you in cute little ditties that are catchy. You find yourself in the kitchen going, oh my gosh, I'm singing that crazy rant, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> right. I'm gonna kill you, Ross, I'm singing your jingle. But that's what the children, we're helping children to, you know, to get involved and want to do, you know, the things that are environmentally, you know, Sound. Good for us that yeah. you, they, we, we want them to care about the world because we're doing this for the future. Right. You know, we're not going to see what's going to happen. And I think you hit on something you know. very important when you talk about making it catchy. Um, there's a saying I'm very fond of that the same principles that work to sell junk uh -huh. will work to sell art or work to sell something that's for the good. And Donna and Ross have really managed the team in a way so that we don't just write little hippie protest songs about the planet. We really try and make it modern music. Um, the Think Ecologically song has Brian Steele, who's a very current modern artist, uh, doing a rap in the middle. Okay. You know, and it, it, so we really try and get it current, and we also try and focus not only on the big picture, well, recycle, but we focus on little things as well. Here's a little thing you can do in your stuff that really practically relates where a kid can go, I can do that. I can put my cans in this. Right. You know, I can do this to save water. So it's small to big. And that's kind of the way Donna's built the Shadow Mountain Company. Whereas, I mean, we look at big picture things, trying to get songs in big places and do big. But the individual members of the company also do little things in their day. You know, she builds little, you know, the props and stuff that we take and uses recycled stuff. So we try and walk the walk. Right. What is, I'm curious, what is the mindset? How is the mindset different to writing a song for, for children or, or, or a song that you have in mind to, to make a difference as opposed to, I'm gonna to try to sit down and write a song that's gonna be a radio hit. How's that mindset different? It's really not any different. Anytime you're writing a song, you ask yourself, who is my listener? How do they receive information? So for instance, if you're writing a song for the country market, mm -hmm. You know, you have stereotypical things that you think of, oh, we're going to hear about trucks and cows and whiskey, <laughs> which is actually not really where you want to go because country fans have already heard those in a right. million songs, but just a basic template of. So when you're thinking about kids, the first thing you do is you go and listen to what are the kids listening to. Mm -hmm. right. And you go and ask, and yep. we've got several different focus groups that we bounce songs off of and go, does this make sense? Is there a part you didn't understand, you didn't like? Right. So we've got kids we play the songs for. When it comes to our rock and roll stuff, we've got rock and roll fans, you know, waitresses and mechanics, and the real consumers of the music that we try and stay in touch well, with. And what's on top ten right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, does it sound like Lady Gaga? You know, right. does it sound like you know uh, Justin Bieber? Um, is it cool? I mean, you know, kids want to listen to songs that are cool. Yeah. They don't want to be uncool. Right. So if they go, oh my gosh, that guy, that guy sounds like you know Maroon Five, or you know, oh she sounds a little bit like Taylor Swift. All of a sudden, they're interested in listening to it, mm -hmm. and so and that's important. It is, and and your vision and guidance with that. And the last thing a kid wants is to get into something like that, then be playing it at school and get made fun of. So right. we want it to be something that their friends will go, what are you listening to? Right. What's that? Hey, that's cool. Yeah. Your company, Shadow Mountain, mm -hmm. uh, helps songwriters get their material placed in movies, televisions. Yes. How, how did you come about getting into that business? Wow, long story short, but the long story very short was that the person that was presently running the company I was a writer for. Uh, we decided to take the helm over and one thing led to another. I closed my business which was, I worked in law for 18 years and I actually produced documentaries. It was um, a company that uh, worked in personal injury law. So my background, I have a really strong background in the legal field. So okay. um, anyway, closed that company and then 
became vice president of the company, and then eventually we took it over 100%. And my husband and I own Shadow Mountain Publishing. Okay, okay. So, um, and it's been an incredible ride because in the last couple of years what we've done is um, I have um, and with the help of CJ is on on the board for the company and some senior writers are, that are just incredible like Kat Korak has been there undevotedly and so is Brian Steele um, and writing specific songs for you know a, a you know a movie or a TV show or I'll say this producer is looking for this, and it's so difficult to get the songs in there. You're, it's really a crapshoot. That's the only way I can say it. It is a crapshoot, mm -hmm. um, and it's networking, right? And being able to to get in there. Um, it's a business of relationships. It, is. it really is, and you have to first. You have to prove to someone. Say you've got a music supervisor for a network television show. Once you get permission, they'll let you maybe send one song. If they like it, now they're never going to take the first thing you send them. Right. But if they like it, they'll let you send two next time. And then maybe you'll actually catch them on the phone. And Donna spends hundreds and thousands of hours on this. <laughs> but once you get to meet them at a conference or something and they get to know you and you build that, then they'll start calling you and go, hey, this is going out next week, but I thought I'd give you a heads up because I want to see your company. I see that you're a good person, you're working hard. They see what kind of a human being you are, and they want to see you succeed. So right. that's, it's a slow building process. It's very rare, though, that they want you to, to succeed. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to interject real quick. Because it really is, it's, it's an ex extremely competitive. I mean, yeah. I also work in the Nashville market, too, because I have a partnership with the Nashville publishing company right on the row. And I mean, they've, you know, they've got uh, the Wreckers, they've got Shadaisy, Little Big Town Hits, Kenny Rogers, Lady A. I mean, this is not a small publishing Right, company right. so I'll act, I also have the Nashville division as well yeah. but then the TV and film um, that is all about you know the people and yeah. and and getting in there and having them know you and trusting because the music has to be 100% clear there's a lot of legal aspects of whether the music is clear and right. people don't understand what that clear what a clear music is what is clear music clear music is music that they control 100% of the master and that they also have all their work for hires in place so um, and, and the copyright. And the copyright. So without that, you've got, you don't have a song that can be placed, you know, right. so. Film and TV people want all the paperwork in place. If they say yes to a song, they want everything in place 24 to 36 hours usually. Yeah. So. Immediate. It yeah. is absolutely immediate. I mean, I recently placed um, 22 songs in a movie called Halloween Party. And you want to talk about difficult, uh, even getting to the producer, but, you know, uh, the long story short of that was I actually ended up in their lap as a result of my email going in their spam. And they said, who is this? Well, this looks interesting. Hi, I'm introducing myself. And so we did a Skype, and, and I, I beat out a very, I can't even say the major publishing company that was pitching, but I beat them out right. and uh, because I just brought them the product and I kept asking them, what do, what do you need? What is it that you're looking for specifically? And CJ wrote eight songs specifically for the movie. Four specifically. Four. They took four that we already had in catalog. Right. And uh, that led to, I was at Donna's office one day and she's Skyping with the director of the movie and they're like, there's this one song we really want to get but it's just too expensive. And while they're talking, in about three minutes, I wrote a verse and a chorus of something that sounded like that, you know, had that vibe, and the, they wanted a specific classic rock kind of feel. I said, what do you think of this? And they said, we'll send you the money, record it, finish writing it. Right. We ended up writing, Donna and I wrote uh, the theme song for the movie together, and, and then we wrote two more after that, and the, the, the partnership just kept building to the point where they just eventually made her the supervisor for all the music in the whole movie. I, just talking about the challenges and all that go along yeah. in the in the songwriting business and the music business, and we were talking prior to, to going on hair here about, and you were telling a great story about a friend of yours that you wrote a song about that I want you to play, but tell the story first, how it came about. Well, my dear friend, Buzz Kiefer, who I think is living down on the Gulf Coast here now because he found he could make better money, but he was a, a songwriting instructor at the University of Tennessee. And so he's teaching at the graduate level, and he says to himself one day, if I can teach it to people so they can go do it for a living, why don't I just go to Nashville and I'll just take the town over in two weeks? <laughs> so he loads up his nice Cadillac, heads off for Nashville, checks into a hotel. A week, a month or so later, he's living in the Cadillac. <laughs> and uh, 
And yeah, it's, there are a lot of preconceptions people have about coming to town. So I wrote this song about him and ended up, uh, that, that ended up being one of the two songs that won me the, the Kerrville New Folk Award. You want to do it? You want to do a little bit for us? Yeah. And by the way, always thanks PBS. Thank you, thank you, and and public radio, <laughs> Click and Clack have played this song, and uh, gotten it known all over the place. So I get work from it. One, two, one, two, three. Heading out of Knoxville Sunday in a brand new car. A week up in Nashville ought to make me a country western star. Living in a cheap hotel, my first audition didn't go so well. And the desk clerk wasn't impressed when the last check bounced just like the rest. Got myself a new address, I'm a living in Cooperville. The only city in the world on wheels, smallest town that you'll ever see. Because it's only population me, oh Lord, but just look at this view I got of the Waffle House parking lot. Till I find a way to pay my bills, I'm a living in Cooperville. Oh, turn around one time. Going door to door, hitting all the record companies. I went to Universal Capital, Warner Brothers, Sony, and Mercury. Twenty-seven time around, the secretary took me into Mr. Brown. And when my recital was done, he said, let's do a little business, son. By the way, where you from? I'm a living in Cooperville. The only city in the world on wheels, smallest town that you'll ever see. Because it's only population me, oh Lord, but just look at this view I got of the Mercury parking lot. Till I find a way to pay my bills, I'm living in Coopdeville. Well, he started grinning, I could see the wheels spinning when I told him about the place I live. He put me on tour and he made Don sure I play every single bill there is. Been to Asheville, Cookville, Brownsville, Greenville, Louisville, Jacksonville, Johnsonville, Danville, Clarksville, Crossville, Evansville, Gainesville, Waterville, Hooterville. I'm still living in Cooperville, the only city in the world on wheels, smallest town that you'll ever see. It's just the boys in the band and me, oh Lord, the back seat's got a double bunk. And there's a drummer living in my trunk. <laughs> Keep playing, trying to pay our bills. We're living in Coopdeville. I don't know if we ever will make it out of this Coopdeville. I'll take it home now. Ha! <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love it. I love it. You know what amazes me, too? I, I like the way you're just able to kind of join in there, and it, it, you guys just have this synergy. I, I, I'm, I'm always so impressed with people who are musically talented. The only thing I play really well is the radio, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's important, because yeah, well, then you is. can play it the is. songs that, you know, that we, that we yeah. have on radio. I know, I know. <laughs> well, it has been a pleasure. It, to kind of hear a little inside of what's going on and, and how you guys are doing things different and kind of getting those creative juices going and, and doing things other than just the just the norm. And as we get out of here, I want you to play and sing the song. Tell me what it is. This is called Talk About Saving the World. Talk About Saving the World. And basically it is the idea of making a difference out there, right? Absolutely. This this song was featured just for a short bit on World News, and we do believe that this, the song behind, one of the, a very important song behind Think Ecologically, okay. which is what Eco the Butterfly and Team Green songwriters are trying to raise up, thinking ecologically. And this awesome. came out of a, we had a conversation one day about, we were talking about just the question you were asking, how do you reach the kids? And we thought, well, when you're little, you want to be a superhero. Well, when you grow up, there are real life things that you can do that do make you a superhero. Good deal. Get you guys to do that in just a moment. I'm going to close out here and let everyone know that if they want to see some more of our conversations with fascinating personalities, you can do so online at wsre.org slash conversations. Special thanks to Ross Orenstein, Donna Britton, and C.J. Watson for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Jeff Weeks. Take great care of yourself. And here is... C.J. Watson and Donna Britton 
to close out the show with Talk About Saving the World. I was just a little thing, but I had big dreams to grow up and be someone. Just like Wonder Woman Show up at the eleventh hour With all of my superpower Talk about saving the world Talk about coming through Talk about getting it done When everyone's counting on you Doesn't that sound good? That little girl got older. Along the way, somebody told her that hero stuff, it isn't true. And I said, I don't believe you. And what about Iwo Jima? Gandhi and Mother Teresa Talk about saving the world Talk about coming through Talk about getting it done When everyone's counting on you And everybody Doesn't that sound good? Yes, it does. Yeah. Some people say the planet's falling apart. Well, I don't have all the answers, but I know where to start. How we gotta do this? Talk about saving the world. Talk about saving the world. Support for this program is provided in part by these corporate sponsors. And by viewers like you.